So you've heard people talking about the A10 Mini and you're kind of wondering what it's all about. And if you've got an A10 Mini, why would you use Ecamm? And if you've got Ecamm, do you need an A10 Mini? I'm hoping as I walk you through the next uh, 20 or 25 minutes, um, you'll get an idea of what you can do with the A10 Mini and how it may be of value uh, for you in your live stream production. Uh, I'm Edward Moffat, I do commercial video, and until recently, until COVID, um, I had enough uh, commercial clients that I really didn't uh, have a website, I didn't need to advertise. Um, things just kind of kept me busy and everything was great, and obviously all of that's changed. Uh, my wife is a yoga instructor, and we have a studio in our house, and I use it for photography and videography. She uses it for yoga. And so ordinarily, it looks like this. And it's uh, just a big, long room. You can see the mats are socially distanced there appropriately. Um, but now, there's camera two. Uh, I have uh, just th um, thrown up some lights and uh, put some gear here on a card table. And uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, uh, so camera one for me for this show, uh, if you will, is this one here right in front of me. Uh, camera two you just saw is over here. Camera three is an overhead uh, camera, which is uh, this camera right here. Um, and it's shooting this shot of the A10 Mini and I'll try and leave it in when I'm doing interesting things with the A10 Mini. And camera four is this MacBook Air over, over here, MacBook Air over here, and this MacBook Pro. This is actually my wife's MacBook Pro that I'm using Ecamm on to uh, make this recording for you. All right, so that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on here. Um, what I wanted to cover here was uh, some uh, quick assumptions. I'm gonna walk you through the A10 Mini and what it's about in terms of the buttons on top. There's lots of buttons, but they're actually laid out very logically. Uh, there's a lot of connections on the back, but also pretty straightforward. Um, that should open your mind to the possibilities of what we can do with this piece of hardware. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the software that comes with it. I'm gonna talk about the A10 Mini versus the A10 Mini Pro. Um, lots of people say, well, you need the A10 Mini Pro. No, you don't. I totally disagree. I will discount that right now and I will show you why I think you don't need it. But there is one scenario where you might need it. So um, I'll, uh, I'll let you decide. I'm going to walk you through why I think you might want to use the A10 Mini with Ecamm Live. I'll walk you through some final thoughts and a couple of tips. So uh, from an assumption standpoint, I'm assuming you understand what Ecamm Live is all about. Uh, obviously you have a Mac or you wouldn't have Ecamm Live. Um, and where this starts to make sense in terms of your live production, as well as financially, uh, I'll touch on it financially, I think it makes sense when you've got two or more cameras. What does the A10 Mini do? It is a small hardware-based switcher. Um, this thing here, uh, you can see I'm switching from camera to camera. Um, and uh, I can go over to that camera. I can go over to this camera. And when I say camera, uh, a camera just means an HDMI input into this device. So uh, it could be a gaming console, it could be your phone, uh, could be your uh, laptop, could be a tablet, doesn't matter. If it's got an HDMI output, you can use that as an input to the A10 Mini and use it to switch uh, a number of things. There are four inputs. Uh, I would argue there are four inputs plus a, a still picture kind of media player thing. Not as robust, I would say, as Ecamm's, um, but it does have its uses. It allows for detailed audio management. I know people complain about audio control on Ecamm, and I don't think that's actually what Ecamm is for. Uh, Ecamm will just take sources, play them out, uh, whereas the A10 Mini has very powerful audio controls. I'm not gonna spend any time on green screen keying today, where Ecamm does an acceptable job, uh, I would say a decent job, of doing uh, green screen uh, keying. Uh, you have to have a green screen. Can't have a blue screen, can't have a yellow screen, can't have plain white, can't have plain black. Uh, whereas uh, with the ATEM products, these are broadcast quality um, uh, switchers and effects built into the ATEM Mini. Uh, if you don't know uh, Blackmagic Design, they make uh, television uh, switching systems, broadcast systems. So the green screen capabilities are far more detailed. Um, and it doesn't matter what the color is in the background. You could have a purple wall behind you and you could just 
key that out. The ATEM Mini uh, is connected to your Mac and it's masquerading as a webcam, even though it might be four cameras. Um, that allows your Mac to do less work because a lot of the heavy lifting is being done in the A10 Mini. So um, for people that have an older uh, Mac and are concerned about resource consumption, uh, that might be an, an interesting benefit for you. Um, it has scalers base, uh, um, built into each input, which means you can take an older camera that maybe maxes out at 720p, uh, and you can take something that is doing uh, 1080p. Uh, they can have different frame rates. And the uh, ATEM Mini kind of equalizes all of that and turns it into whatever your output setting is. And um, from an output setting standpoint, there is only 1080p. That's what it does. It outputs a 1080p signal. So you can have 1080p at 24 frames a second or 1080p all the way up at 60 frames a second, which looks pretty spectacular uh, for live streaming. Keys on the top, the buttons, are laid out into logical groups. Uh, the top left section is all audio. So let me come over here. All these buttons here, all these little ones that you can see above my hand, all of these are audio. Um, and if that looks complicated, it isn't. Let me walk you through it real quick. These four buttons here, so if I do that, these four buttons here are just for um, in my, uh, audio input one. So there's on, and there's off, and there's volume up, and there's volume down. These buttons here are associated with each of the cameras. So um, right now, uh, the only audio input that's on right now is audio coming from camera two, because my wireless mic is actually plugged into my GH5 Panasonic camera over there uh, on camera two. AFV means audio follows video, means that when that camera is on, you get audio from that camera. If you are in a live situation where your cameras switch around a lot and they are presenting audio, there may be good value in using audio follows video so that when you're on, say, camera one, you're not getting audio from camera three where there might be noise in the background or something like that. Or you can just leave it on the whole time, uh, which is what I'm gonna do for this live session that we have here. Picture in picture uh, is pretty neat. So one of the things you can do is, I mean, you just turn it on and it pops a picture into a corner and then these four buttons allow you to select which corner you put it in. What I have done is gone into the software and I'll talk about it in a second and set this up so that I can just have a, a funny shaped one. This is not a, ordinarily it would be a 16 by nine shape, um, but I have trimmed off the top and the bottom uh, so that I can leave that on the screen, but come back over here and do other things and I can point to buttons and whatnot. The last section really are, is the faders. And the way the faders work is there's two principles here. One is cut and one is auto. Cut means I'm gonna to go to the next camera by click. When you press cut, you go to that camera right, right away. So I'm on camera one, I wanna to go to camera two, boom, there's camera two, right? However, I can also use auto. Uh, so if I use auto, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but there are four buttons that control the amount of time it takes. If I go and turn on two seconds, you see it's a much slower change. So I can change instantly using cut or I can change nice and slowly using auto. So let me go back to um, the overhead shot. These buttons here select the type of uh, uh, transition you have from one camera to another. So for example, uh, right now we're using mix. Uh, that's what Blackmagic Design calls what the rest of us might call a crossfade or a dissolve, right? But you can have a dip. And what a dip does is it fades to uh, a predetermined color and then moves back to uh, the second camera. So you see how uh, it, it goes to white and then goes to the next camera. Uh, personally, I don't use that. Uh, there are other things like slides, pushes, um, 
kind of dissolves across and then a wipe like that. So that's all built into the hardware and it's just push button simple. If you're doing something where, you know, you've got a rant and you're screaming and yelling at the camera and you, you know, you want really quick cuts or, or you're a DJ and you've got tunes thumping and you want the camera changes to be really fast, then I think Ecamm does that really well. Or you could use the ATEM and um, switch really, really quickly between the different cameras and uh, fool around like that. Um, a lot of uh, my, the productions that I do are more uh, business uh, oriented. And with my wife's live streams for yoga, having, uh, you know, a one second fade between, you know, one sort of thing and another uh, makes a lot of sense to me it, because it's less jarring. It, it, you don't need that energy. Uh, that energy is not what it's about. So um, that's the way I use it. All right. And then the, um, I guess, uh, let's go back over here. The final button over on the right hand side is the fade to black button, which does uh, exactly uh, what you think it does. Yep. Okay. So uh, looking at the back uh, where all of the cables come in, um, we have the Ethernet control on here, they call it ATEM control, allows you to put your ATEM mini on a network and it allows one or two or three or even four different computers either on the same network or connected remotely. This is how powerful this is. Uh, connected remotely to manage the ATEM. You literally could have four different people doing four different jobs in producing your live session uh, with the ATEM. The webcam out is just a USB-C connector. Uh, you plug that into your Mac and your Mac thinks it's seeing a webcam. The HDMI output can be set one of two ways. It can be your program out, which is your live what's happening now, right? So right now, camera one, that's my program out. It can also be set to show you your preview out, meaning what do you have queued up next? So the HDMI output can either be preview or it can be program. Program, uh, again, being your live view. Uh, obviously, you've got your four HDMI inputs. As I said, they can be you know whatever kind of device. They don't have to be a camera. And then you've got two additional audio inputs, uh, which can be mic or line level inputs. Okay, that was the hardware. Let's talk about the software now. The software control panel for switching uh, is divided up into similar sections. You have the program section over here, which is what's live right now. We're in this picture. Camera one is what's live right now. What's queued up is your preview. That's your next thing. And it's also camera one, which is, okay, a really bad example. So let me come over here. All right, so now you're seeing what I actually have running live here. What's going on is camera four is what's going out of the ATEM. Uh, we're ignoring it because in Ecamm, I've chosen to show you an application, but what's coming out is actually camera four and what's queued up is camera one. So instead of pressing the auto button on the ATEM mini, I can click this here, this button, so now we have switched from the one camera to the other uh, and you can, you, we actually saw this pretend to move uh, as if it was a real, you know, old school hardware switcher. Um, but uh, what's nice about that is you can take your mouse and grab that switcher uh, lever in the software and slide it slowly and do things that you might otherwise not be able to do. For example, let me do this. So that's about 25% of the way. So let me come back here. So now you can see this and I've just moved the slider to there. And what that gives us is something like that. So where would you use that? Well, you might use that if you're, if you're uh, well, maybe not quite like that, maybe a little stronger. You might have church lyrics, uh, you know, the, the lyrics to the hymns uh, going down the screen from one source while your camera is maybe showing the congregation. And you can manually move this and go as slow as you want to get to that fade to the other side. Um, the other thing you can do 
is um, when I press the buttons on the ATEM Mini, so you see this value here is one second. Well, I could make it a second and a half. Uh, I can make it two seconds, right? But I can also come over here and make it three seconds, or well, that's actually three and a half. So it's three seconds and 15 frames because I'm broadcasting it um, 30 frames a second. So what that looks like, uh, if I then go and press on the auto button, is a three and a half second fade. We have the uh, media player. So right now, in this, I have this set up to one of my wife's openings uh, for her classes. So let me uh, set that up over here. In my actual, on, on my ATEM, I have 20 different slots for media. I've just chosen, you know, from a picking list, I'm gonna turn on the media player as my next camera. So see how that's gone green? And let's see, can we see that? Yeah, so you see how this button here has lit up green? It says still. So there is a still image queued up as effectively the next camera, right? So if I press auto, this is an opening screen that I would have before my wife's class starts. And I would put that up using uh, the A10 Mini, but I would use a timer from Ecamm that looks like this. And I might call that either from the overlays menu on Ecamm, or I might use my stream deck. Final thing I want to show you was these things down here. Remember I told you you could have different computers managing one A10 Mini. So right now we're looking at the switching panel. Right, but there is a media panel, which somebody could, like it could be their full-time job during the production to move media in and out. Um, there's an audio panel and there's a camera panel. So I'm gonna walk you through those. Um, this is the media panel and the media panel is broken up into logical sections. This is where you're pulling uh, your media from. So your hard drive or even an externally connected hard drive or a RAID array or whatever. Um, you have 20 different slots for media. But in the middle of your live, you can pull things in and out. Um, and then you have what's ready, like queued up. What is the one thing that we would use next? If I come back to, I was in switching view, so now this is the media view. So we have these different uh, pieces of uh, these different stills. So if I want to show this car uh, getting really, really close to the uh, wall uh, on a race I shot, um, then I would do that and I would turn on the media player and I would make that the image. Now you can't see it because Ecamm is showing you the software, but if I come over here and switch back to the output of the ATEM, there you go. There's that picture and I can bring that right back to, so that effectively is kind of almost like input five, if you will. I can choose another image and I can choose another image, and I can choose another image, and every time I make a change there, you would see that in your live production. So, for example, there's an image from that media pool. There's another image. There's another image, right? And so I can go and grab these different images I've made um, and drop them into my live uh, session whenever I want, but if that's too complicated for the person doing the switching, uh, and I would argue it is, um, then sure, you can use a stream deck uh, or you could have somebody else do it. Um, and that's where having the ethernet control and a, a second person or a third person or a fourth person um, leveraging these different uh, control panels live in your production uh, can be of value. Um, the next thing is audio. Every one of these channels has gain control, an equalizer, a bunch of dynamic controls I'll show you in a second, uh, a slider, uh, which works exactly like a physical slider would, uh, panning left, right, and then there's a master channel over here, which also has EQ and uh, uh, dynamic controls. Let me, uh, again, take you over to the live uh, view of things here. There you go. So you can see camera two, has audio on, and that's why we've got these bright red bars. None of the other uh, inputs have that. Um, so you can see how this is set up. Every one of the channels has EQ. 
Uh, it's a six band EQ, a very, very powerful. And I can take something and put it up like this. And you probably hear a change in the sound of my voice and I can pull it down. And you can, you can be, you know, very prescriptive on how that gets used. Same thing with the dynamic range uh, controls over here. We have an expander, a noise gate, a compressor, and a limiter. And I quite often use the limiter, especially with any of uh, the live microphones, because if somebody coughs, let me show you what happens when I cough. All right, so I have the limiter on this right side. So this channel has a limiter and this one doesn't, even though they're both being fed by the same microphone. So if I cough, <coughs> so this one got up to minus 20, but it never actually hit zero. But this one with the limiter only got up to minus 4.6. So you see how potentially awesome that is. That allows you to manage your audio, and especially during something live and complicated, like with musicians or different people speaking on different types of microphones. The other thing to think about here is that um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six inputs, but there are 12 channels to this mixer. Every one of them has their own pan control. This could be keyboards, and this could be guitar, and this could be bass, this could be another keyboard, this could be an overhead drum on the right, this could be overhead on the left, and so on. So you can kind of use this a bunch of different ways, turn all of the different mics on, uh, with, or all the different audio inputs on, and I can do that remotely from the ATEM. Uh, I'm gonna turn them all off. Okay, now watch, I don't know, can you see my mouse? Oh, you can see my mouse. Okay, so watch the volume level here. See how that's going down? You can probably barely hear me now. So I'm gonna talk louder, but now I'm gonna turn it back up. So I can control all of that. So I can control all of this from the ATEM hardware itself. The last thing that we have uh, to talk about, and I don't use it at all, is camera control. So this screen here gives you the ability to control four cameras remotely but they have to be Blackmagic design cameras. So for most of us, not a lot of help, um, but uh, certainly people have Blackmagic design cameras um, and this would allow you to control uh, the, the amount of zoom and the focus, color temperature, the amount of light. Bottom line here is that these four panels could be managed by four different people during your live production and you could keep them all busy Let's uh, move to talking about the A10 Mini versus the A10 Mini Pro. The A10 Mini Pro can stream. It has an encoder built into it. It will stream directly to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Periscope, wherever. The A10 Mini Pro can record directly out the USB port to a connected USB hard drive. The A10 Mini Pro can provide multi-view out of the HDMI port. The A10 Mini Pro is twice the price of the A10 Mini. The A10 Mini Pro can stream directly to YouTube and Facebook and, and others, and that's great, but I've got Ecamm. I don't need it to do that. The A10 Mini Pro allows for direct recording. Well, that's great, but again, I have Ecamm, and what you're seeing right now is Ecamm being used to record this session. The third item, though, is kind of interesting, and the concept of multi-view can be of value to people in certain situations. So I'm gonna to touch on that on the next slide, uh, but I did wanna go back to uh, kind of a financial view of this. If you have two Elgato CamLink capture cards plugged into two USB ports, then you've spent X amount of dollars. For the price of the two Elgato CamLinks, you probably could have bought an A10 Mini and be doing what I'm doing, but be doing it with four cameras and have all of the audio controls and slightly, you know, some, some interesting uh, digital video effects and better green screen keying and, and that kind of thing. The question then becomes, um, does that make sense for you? An A10 Mini is half the price of an A10 Mini Pro. So at double the price, the only real difference with the A10 Mini Pro from a hardware standpoint that you can see as a user is there are buttons over here in the A10 Mini Pro. If we come back over here, these are these buttons here. I don't know how well you can see that. Financially, if you have two 
cameras or more, it starts to become a, probably a wash if, if uh, an Elgato cam link is what you might use to bring cameras uh, over HDMI into your computer. So multi-view, what's multi-view? Multi-view is one HDMI output that sends this whole thing to your screen. Uh, and as the live producer, this can be very powerful. Uh, so we've got, you know, preview over here. This is what you've got queued up next. This is what's live and the audio meters for what you're sending out uh, right now. Uh, across the middle, you have your four HDMI inputs. This is your uh, what's queued up in your uh, media pool. This shows you that you're on air right now, what your bandwidth uh, stream is like, and that it, your, the cache to transmit is okay. Um, if you're recording, uh, this tells you your recordings are going fine uh, and how long they've been at it. And then you've got a quick view of all of your audio inputs. So that all sounds fantastic. But I would argue uh, Ecamm is giving me my live output. I can actually see it on my screen right now. When I look right there, I can see that what I'm showing you is a picture of me right now. And oh, look, there's my slide deck, right? So I don't really need that. Um, all my cameras are locked down. I know that this is camera one. I know that that's camera two. I know that this up here uh, is camera three that I'm using for picture in picture. So. In my situation, there's no value for me in spending an additional, you know, a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is to get the A10 Mini Pro because I don't need that functionality. However, if I was doing live events and there were camera operators actually managing the cameras, I wouldn't know what was on camera three. I'd know that Bob is over there managing camera three, but I don't know what he's got right now. That's where this concept of multi-view is of value. Um, I would say that knowing what's in the media queue, yeah, that's kind of interesting, but you know, I can manage that uh, really nicely from Ecamm. Uh, the overlay panel does a great job, and if you're using a stream deck, um, I mean, I can stick a picture on the screen and another picture on the screen and another picture on the screen, uh, and if I have them set up in advance, I can do all kinds of crazy stuff, right? And, you know, leveraging, uh, let's see what I learned from uh, Bradley Vinson. Um, you know, I can bring in sidebars and we do that all the time in my wife's live productions. Uh, you know, and here's an example of a sidebar I built for Gravity Yoga. My wife explains what Gravity Yoga is at the beginning of her lives because it's a different kind of thing. You're holding poses for a really long time. Uh, and there's timers involved, which Ecamm is great at. Um, and, but I've got this set up to go really, really slowly because her explanation takes about two minutes. But she's looking at a uh, 42-inch screen. She can time what she's saying to it uh, and all of that. So is multi-view of value for me? No, it isn't. Um, but if you're doing a live thing and multiple people are managing cameras, um, there could be a lot of value in that. All right, you've got multiple cameras and you want more control. You want better control over your audio. You want more control over your fades, the amount and duration and that kind of thing. The fine grain control over keying, as I said, is the kind of quality you would expect and has been in television stations for years. Um, you want your Mac to do a little less processing. So you're offloading the camera management from Ecamm to an external piece of hardware. That may be a value for those of you that have older or less powered machines. Um, the device that I'm doing this recording on right now, um, so this one right here is a bottom of the line uh, 2019 uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch, right? So it is a quad i5. Uh, the processor speed is like 1.4 gigahertz or something. It's very low power. Um, it is only, uh, it only has eight gig of Ram. It was the cheapest thing and we bought it refurbished, uh, from Apple. So, you know, very low cost. Uh, it was basically the cost of a MacBook Air, uh, but double the processing power. So I like that. And it is sufficient for, um, pushing out, uh, live streams. Um, I like the idea of having, uh, my camera is connected over HDMI rather than USB. Uh, and again, I'll point to camera two. Camera two is connected over a 25 foot uh, HDMI cable. Well, there's no such thing as a 25 foot USB cable. 
Um, uh, the USB protocol, if you know about these things, is very chatty. And the larger the distance, the higher the latency. And it, at a certain point, it just breaks. Um, there's no concept of, of a USB cable larger than maybe 10, 12 feet, unless you start to involve uh, electronic repeaters and amplifiers and that kind of thing. Um, whereas with HDMI, you can get HDMI cables on Amazon that are 300 feet long, right? And uh, so uh, very, very different in terms of stability. Um, I like the idea of as much stability in my live streams as possible. And as uh, I think it was Adrian Salisbury that said, uh, there's two types of people who stream, uh, those who have had a crash while streaming and those who are about to. The macro functionality that I, I didn't even touch on in the A10 mini software is super powerful. So for example, uh, you could set up a macro to go to camera two in five seconds. Now, why would you do that? Because you're a one man band and you want to not be too distracted by what's going on in um, the management of your cameras, but you like the idea that the cameras change every so often. So you could actually write a macro that says, go to camera two after some amount of time, uh, then go to camera four, then go to camera one, then go to camera three, then go to camera two. And you could write this macro um, so that your entire live uh, except for the very beginning when maybe you start and, and are addressing one camera and your very ending where you're, you know, you've gone to a slide or something. Uh, it looked like there was a camera or an operator and they were just moving the cameras uh, all the time. And they could be quick changes or they could be slow changes. Um, and you could basically make it look like it was completely random. Uh, that, that's one thing you could do. You could set things up so that you had a macro that is built for the uh, ATEM control software, but that you pull from Stream Deck and you press a button and magically uh, your green screen uh, technology keys out uh, the back wall and does and puts you someplace or does something. Um, and obviously you can leverage the power of a Stream Deck if you've got one. Um, there are vents in the um, ATEM Mini. So let's go back over here. I don't know if you can, yeah, the lighting is such that you really can't see that, but there are vents. Oh, you can there. There's a vent here and a vent on the other side. All right. So why is that important? Well, there's a lot of processing going on in this device. Um, and the airflow goes this way from the right to the left. And that's important because I've seen people go, oh, my uh, A10 mini got really hot. So I put a fan there and you see them with a fan over on this side. Well, they're blowing the hot air back into the device. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So you want to keep these vents free. You want to keep, you know, an inch of space here and you want the airflow to be able to go that way. So with the A10 mini, we have a really fine grain camera and audio control and the software is very lightweight. Ecamm right now is running here and it's using almost half of a core. Intel thinks there are eight cores from a reporting standpoint, even though there's only four cores, but they go, oh, well, there's four cores, but each core can do run two threads. Yeah. Okay. So that's what one sixteenth of the machine's capabilities. Uh, when we look at the ATEM control software, look at that. It's not even 2%, right? So the story for you is really this number right here. You see that? That is the resource consumption of your machine. And it's basically at more than 75% idle. This machine is only a quarter being utilized. And from a power, from a resource capability uh, perspective, I would argue that this machine is not a very powerful machine. Uh, let's look at memory consumption, uh, Ecamm, is here at six, you know, around 600 meg. Uh, and I've, I've seen it up higher, up around, uh, you know, a gigabyte maybe. Uh, but the ATEM software is only 200. Uh, so very, very, very light uh, resource consumption here. Ecamm is awesomely powerful with other things that it does, right? Uh, the overlay control is just super fantastic. If I want to drop in a video, boom. I go to overlays, I turn it on and, and, you know, Hey, magically there's, you know, stars or whatever. And obviously, you know, overlays like that, 
or overlays like this, where you can you know, bring a ticker right onto the screen um, and just as easily uh, get rid of it. Film an 11, baby. What about comments? Uh, comments from your viewers in essentially real time um, being brought into the live uh, on Facebook and, and YouTube. And again, my wife and I use that and I've used that with clients and people just, they think that's great. Um, the streaming, the bandwidth compression, um, uh, the management and the reporting of bandwidth consumption uh, with Ecamm is uh, you know, almost too much. Uh, there's so much detailed information there. So that's it. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I apologize for talking too long, um, but there's a lot of stuff this A10 Mini does, and I didn't even touch on all the functionality in the control software. Um, hopefully, um, you've got a better appreciation of what this is all about. And the last thing I'm going to do here is set this to a two second fade and I'm going to turn this off and we're going to move back over to my uh, MacBook Air. Thanks so much. If I can answer questions, drop them in the comments and um, yeah, all the best.